video, what we did is I was talking about the, the um, different pieces and preparation of what you needed to do. And I feel like um, I wasn't real clear on the table runner. On the table runner, when you're cutting out the pieces, you are going to have, for lemonade, let's say, you're gonna have a section that is says, um, part C4, and it is gonna go down to from one to 45. And then you're gonna have part um, C5, that's going to go all the way down to from 46 to 47. And then you'll have another section that is C, C6, and it's gonna go from 108 down to 144. These three sections you're going to um, tape together. So on the first one, with one through 45, I'm going to fold back the, um, the paper along that line, along the black line. And then I'm going to take it, and if you look here, it says here, um, tape uh, line to B4. I'm not sure why it says that, but um, you're going to take 45, and I'm going to line that and butt that right up against the, by near the 46. And then I'm going to tape it. And I'm just gonna put a piece of tape right there. I'm making sure that that it's not over the line, it's butted right up against that line, and that these lines are close to matching. So if, it'll look like this, okay? Then I'm going to move down, and I'm going to, I see that there's a 107 from from 46 down to 107, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to find 108 to 144. Then I'm going to go ahead, I folded against that black, the solid line, and I'm going to line that up, right up against the solid line next to 108. And I'm just gonna put that on there and line up like that. So I've kind of, I've matched this line at the top, I've matched this line at the bottom, and I butted up so that I have um, 107 is butted up to 108. And then I'm going to take that. So now this will be this is what how big long of a piece you're going to have for that table runner. Now you could end this table runner at any place that you really would want to. Let's say you wanted it to be at from one, and you wanted it to only be to a hundred, and that's how long you would want that to be. You can very easily just cut and end that right there at a hundred instead of going the whole way. So now we have um, one section. So here is the lemonade. This is the side one. If you look at um, the lemonade at the picture, here is the table runner. And so you have one on one side and then a paper piece section on the other side. So you could also just do one whole section if you wanted to and not even add another section so it would look more like the table the placemats instead of having this on either end so you would do that also then if you wanted to do the two sections you're going to do the exact same thing with c1 c2 and c3 you would take them together exactly the same way now I said this is pretty long um, to work with. So that's when I was talking about folding this up. I just kind of roll this up like this. And I just keep rolling it until probably about right there. I would be around there. And I would tape 
I would put a pin in there and then I would start working on this length. And so that's how you do work on the table runner paper pieces. You would do the exact same thing with Picnic. You're going to cut all the pieces apart and you're going to tape them together so that they're in numerical order, okay? So that is that. What we're going to do um, when we start sewing, you what we what I did here is exactly what you're going to do on this whole length. All right. Now, I had opened up and we had talked about picnic um, the number the picnic band and that they have the jelly roll. And I'm going to unroll this just like this. And we have all of these colors. So I am going to cut all of these, this whole, these strips, two and a half inch strips, into four inch, the four by two and a half by four inch rectangles. I'm going to leave the colors though in the same order that they were rolled up. So this would be color one, color two, three, four, and all the way down, keeping them in this, in this order. So when you are at, when she's telling you to that for point one, and remember the point one is one of, is the second point one or two, these, each one of these is considered a point, and that is why, why what you're gonna do by her chart. So point one, or point two, has color 15. So once you have all of these cut in their four inch um, rectangle, and they're all in order, you're going to take color 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This would be 15, color 15. So that would be considered your, um, the point two is gonna be color 15. Point one will be color one, which would be this one right here. Point three is color two, which would be this one. Point four would be color 16, which would be this one. So you're going to stack all of these that you've cut up, you're gonna put them in a stack in this numerical order of what they've called for. And, that, and then you're going to work off of that stack. Okay, it's, I, hope that, I hope that is more explanatory for you as you see this. So just lay all of these colors out, keep them in this order, and then you would be able to do exactly what her chart tells you to do. All right? Okay, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, you know, if not, just give give me a holler and we will um, we'll walk you through it. So that is that part. Okay. Now we are going to go and we're going to go into paper piece, actually paper piecing. So I'm going to kind of move this down here and put this here. And I have. I'm going to start, this is the um, second uh, placemat that I'm going to be working on. It is starting with one all the way through 41. We're going to be piecing those pieces. So what I'm going to do is I have, I have my two stacks. I'm also, I wanna show you on here, is, um, let me see. The number, the, the number of the piece is in, just in the letters going through the center. So this is one, 
two, three, four, all the way down 40 um, through 41. Those are the pieces. The numbers that are in the circle are the number of the, that's the um, color. So we have um, twos. This would be color two and this would be color three on there. So I am going to take, your directions will tell you that you're going to take whatever color they're wanting for color two, they're going to, um, you're going to take that and you're going to place it face down like this. And I'm going to take color one or color three, I'm sorry. Color three is going to be on top of that. I'm going to just put them on top. Okay. And then I am going to line up. If you look at this paper, it has arrows that go down. And, and that is your sewing direction. So I am going to line up this, this arrow right here on the edge of the fabric a quarter of an inch. Okay. So if I was to, I can kind of lay this right here and I don't think the camera will pick this up. Try it. So I have it laid on my fabric, pattern facing up, the pattern, the paper piecing facing up. This line with the arrows, I have lined up to be a quarter inch along this edge, the straight edge. And I'm just kind of centering that so that I have fabric off of this edge and fabric coming off of this edge too. Like I said, there's a little bit, you have to kind of think outside of the box a little bit on this. So now I'm gonna take this over to the machine, just like this, and I'm going to sew. So as I said before, we have color two, which is the yellow, that is, um, for point two on your on your foundation piece, I have color two face down, uh, right side up, and I'm taking color three, which is the green. I'm laying that right on to the um, color two, lining up the edges, and then I'm taking my pad my foundation piece, and I am going to line. This first line from between one and two, I'm lining it up along a quarter, about a quarter of an inch in. And then I am going to stitch from the top down. So it's going to be, it's going to appear like the paper is kind of, it's tilted a little bit, but that is, it's going to be okay. So just line that up, bringing it in and I can see here that it's a quarter of an inch and down here it's a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to also set up my machine. It is gonna be on straight stitch. I, If you have a, um, I like the quarter inch foot. I like the 97D that comes with, that's with the Berninas. Um, and I like, and I use the, my walking foot, um, the dual feet I bring down into that 97D foot, if you have that. Um, I find that I can see the line better using that, that quarter inch foot. Uh, I see it better than if I use even a bigger. I, I have more control of keeping it on the line, I guess is what I should say. So I'm going to line it up and I'm going to start right at the very beginning of that line. 
I have taken my uh, stitch length down to 1.60 and I'm on a straight stitch. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew. I'm sewing directly on that line and in the direction that the arrow is telling me to sew. So I'm going to go, I am going to back stitch a little bit. If you have, um, if you have the capability of doing a tie off at the beginning and at the end, that, that works too. Uh, I personally like to do it myself. I just like to, and I am just sewing directly on that line. You notice that I have my paper, that whole thing is folded up so it's not in the way. When I get down to the end, I'm going to go ahead and back stitch, and then I'm going to cut my fabric, or my thread, I'm sorry. Okay, now, here's what I have. I have, right here, I have sewn this line down if you notice, it's a quarter of an inch along that edge. And then I am going to take this and I'm going to take the yellow and I'm going to fold it back right along that seam line and I'm going to finger press it. I like to just use my nail and really press it in because you do not want it folded over even a little bit because you'll lose your point on this side. So I've got that all finger pressed in line. Now I'm going to take it back over to, um, actually let me just move, I'll move this over back over here, my cutting mat. I'm going to take it and I'm going to have this with that, the color, now it's open, it's like this. And then I'm going to go from between two and three, I'm going to, um, that's the next line that we're going to be sewing on. But first of all, I'm going to take a, just a regular card, uh, card stock type paper, um, template plastic, something with a straight edge and not too thick. And I'm going to lay it right up against that line from two to three. And I'm going to put that right on that line and I'm taking my paper and I'm folding it back over it. And I'm, see how this is kind of sticking up? That's the stitching. And I'm just gonna pull that down like that. And then I take a quarter, an add a quarter ruler like this. And I'm going to lay, the add a quarter has a, like a lip on it that will butt right up against that card and that um, fabric and I can take it and I can cut. Now I have just given myself a, four, a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna take, if you look here, there's fabric three, which is the green, fabric two, which is the yellow. I'm going to go back down to fabric three and I'm going to take one of the pieces of fabric three. I'm gonna turn this over, making sure that that's laying flat. And I'm going to take the edge, lining it up right with the edge that I just cut. I'm making sure that I have a little bit of fabric past the seam, the end of it on either end. And there I am. And then I pick this up like this, and I'm gonna take it to the machine. And now I'm going to sew on the line between two and three. And I'm going to sew down, starting at the very edge. I'm gonna do a, a small back stitch. have a pin or I would be pinning this.
you will end up getting in a rhythm of doing this and um, okay now we're going to take it back over to the, the mat and I'm opening that up and I'm going to finger press it really I use my nail and I just run that along that seam line, spreading, spreading that fabric apart so that I know that I don't have any little creases in. Okay, I'll turn that over. Now I'm going to cut between three and four. I'll take my card, I lay that up against that line that we're gonna sew on actually, fold the paper back over it, Kind of pulling this stitching down, just, just letting it loose. And now I'm going to cut that. Now I have, now I'm going to add color two again. So I can take this over here. I can lay this right on here, lining up those colors. The, the edges, making sure that it's kind of centered and that I'm on, I have enough to cover each seam line. And then I will go ahead and I'll sew that. Now I kind of will look underneath here to make sure that I'm, that I didn't shift it any and that it's lined up okay. Now I'm going to sew on the line between three and four. a little bit of a back stitch. And just making sure that nothing is shifted when I go. And I'm sewing directly on that line. You want to be right on that line. And that's why for to me that quarter inch foot just really makes a difference. It 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 just keeps that line right in view. And you don't have a lot of play that you can mess up on. All right, done with that. Now we're gonna come back over here. And again, I'm going to spread the fabric and I'm going to finger press, just like that. Okay, now I have that done. Now I wanted to show you because when we are um, trimming, we've trimmed this, these pieces off of the ones that we've used. Well, you're going to be using all of those in on your other um, placemats that you're you doing. And so you're going to set them aside like that. And, and I just keep them in two piles. Now, when I go back to do, um, to so to use these, I want to show you how I do it. So first of all, you're going to go ahead. Now we're going to cut between four and five. Darn flies! All right. And now I'm putting it on, putting my card right on the line between four and five. I'm folding it back over. I'm gonna pull kind of down on that. The, why I like this method is that I, I have that quarter inch. I don't have to fudge it, fidget with the making sure that another piece is going to fit in there that's an odd angle. Um, I did this, when I did the uh, paper piecing, there was a couple quilts out there that I had done um, that they're all different angles in that and it just went beautifully. So now we're going to be sewing a number three, which is my green. I'm gonna take one of these pieces and I'm going to show you how to put those pieces on because they they do have a, um, they have a, an angle on them now because we've trimmed that. So I'm going to come here 
and I am going to put, and the great thing about batik is that there's not a right or wrong, really, and so you're, you're gonna be okay. I'm going to line this up, and I'm going to line up actually the straight edge because this pointed edge will come over and give us a little bit more room that we need. I'm gonna put it on here like this, making sure that I'm okay here and I'm okay here. Did I have that on the right? No, this goes this way. I'm sorry. It goes, the, the widest part is going to go down at that, the widest part of where the last green was and then I'm going to set it on there like this. Just making sure that I have enough fabric covering that, the cut line on the other side. I'll take this over here. And now I'm going to sew between four and five. right on that line. Now what happens if that, if this doesn't fit in that space? Not a tragic thing. I can very easily tear out. So we're gonna go back over here. Uh, now look at right there, see how that folded down? So I need, well, I guess I'll, maybe these. I'm just gonna take that stitching out right there. I can kind of pull back on that a little bit. These things happen and um, and you can tear out, it's not gonna, okay, see, I just tore that out a little bit. And I'm gonna go back over and I'll just sew this section again is right in there, making sure that that's up. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull this over. I'm going to finger press it, stretching that fabric so that it's laying flat. And do you see how that, the, the wider part and how that point covers section five? If you can see that. Um, so it's now it's covered the section five. So that's how you use these cut pieces. Um, always making sure that you're using the flat side um, on, of the angle when you're sewing it so that that kind of that more pointed, the wider point is going to the left so that when you turn it, it then covers the area that you need it to cover. Now we're gonna do this exact same thing. I'm going to go now between five and six because that's the next next sewing line. Okay, so we're gonna fold it back over. Now you notice that this um, piece is narrower because we have already cut part of it off in the previous, in the previous sewing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I am going to go and I'm going to take that, trim it, and then we are going to continue this all the, the exact same thing. We are going to continue all the way across. And we're going to do that with all four of our placemat pieces. So it's absolutely no different from um, piece to piece. You're going to do this all the way across and you will end up with these. See them? That is exactly what we were doing. We have done 
on this one. So here's this, here is this. So you will end up with um, four of these. Now when you get done with those, after you stitch them all, now it's gonna be time to trim. I'm going to place this like this. And we're going to trim along either side of these pieces right in here. All right, and so I'll get my ruler. And this out of the way. And I'm going to line up, I'm going to line up my quarter inch lines all the way down on the dark solid line. Doing that, I will have lined up and I'm making sure that I've got a quarter inch. So if I just keep lining that up, making sure that that quarter inch is lined up on the, on the seam line of the piece that I just did, we're going to go ahead and cut. Bring this down. Lining those, that quarter inch up with the solid dark line because we're cutting off of the excess. So that's all lined up. Let me go up there. There you are. Turning it and again, all the way around I am going to line that up. Now I have this big long ruler and, and, and it works great. A shorter one will work. You just wanna make sure that you keep it so that you have that so your quarter inch seam. You will do this with all of your pieces. You, you will also do this, the exact same thing for your table runner. The table runner is not gonna be any different than what you're doing here. section that you just sewed together between 1 and 41 you have that now now is the time when you're going to come in and you're going to sew on your these pieces I prefer taking the paper out um, I can get it to set in there a lot easier so what you're going to do is I just kind of take this and I will pull a little bit and you're going to pull out your papers. And this is, um, this is a job that the kids, the grandkids kind of like at first and then they get bored after two or three sheets of pulling it out. But you're just going to pull out all of the, the off pull off all the paper. And you have a garbage can sitting by you. And you go all the way down. This is the part I think that pay people really don't like about paper piecing is having to tear the paper out once you're done. I don't mind it. I sit and watch TV and I do it. That. So I'm not going to tear all of these out right now. Um, I think you get the idea. 
And so you would have a piece, it would look like this after all these pieces are off. When you get all the pieces off, I then take my, I've cut these at one inch, one inch wide, and I am going to line that up along the edge. And I kind of make sure that I've lined it up. I pick one of the stripes to line it up with. And then I am going to go all the way down and pin this. And I will sew that on, on this side. And then I will take the other and I will sew another one going down the other side, all the way down. So it'd be like, like this. And then when you open it up, those are gonna be pressed up like that towards, this, towards your, um, your stripe, okay? And, and you'll do that with all of your pieces, all four of them. And then you're going to go, and it's going to give you the directions in here. Assembling the four placemats, if you look on here. And it's going to tell you exactly what you need to cut, how to, how to do these. This is your, this, this section here is this top little section. Um, and you're cutting that one and three fourths by 20 and a half. And then you're going to be cutting the bottom section and you're going to cut that at, let me see, eight and a half. This is gonna be eight and a half this way and 20 and a half the width. So your the height is going to be eight and a half, the width will be 20 and a half. You're going to sew them on either side of your of your placemat. You will sew the um, one and three fourths by twenty and a half on the top. You'll sew the eight and a half by twenty and a half on the bottom. And then you're going to take a piece of batting. You'll put that on the back side of your um, your your top. And then you're going to cut a piece of um, backing the size of your placemat. Then you will make your binding just like a normal, you're going, this is going to finish up just like a normal, as if you were doing a quilt. And you'll sew your binding on, and then you have a beautiful placemat. So with that, um, I hope you enjoy this. I hope, you know, that you will fall in love with paper piecing just like I have. You you will never be able to get the points like you have on here any other way that is perfect on that. So join us. I hope you um, enjoy this and we will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.